A really, really sad number. This is so sad. Can we hit one like? One like is to go today. If we hit actually four likes, then we can get Pyro's dad out of prison. Papa Flammy's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, are you here? Hey, Vsauce, Flammable here. How thick is a prime number? And how much does your mother actually weigh? So you see, it's almost Christmas time and you see, I'm a trained baker and whenever I think about Christmas, I actually think about baking too. Baking stollen, baking cookies and here yeah, we are going to talk about cookies today a little bit. But also here on Baking Math, we like to combine baking with math. <laughs> you can already hear it from the name of the show. And here. Yeah, Math and cookies, how could we combine those two exactly? Well, maybe you have heard about Leibniz cookies before, those ones. I'm going to place this cookie right here. What does it have to do with math? Well, you see, uh, maybe you know about Leibniz. This guy didn't really invent calculus, but for most people he is known as being an average math pleb, so I guess that really counts. If you take a closer look at those Leibniz cookies, you might notice that at the side of those Leibniz cookies, you are going to find 52 little teeth right there on the side. So the question for today is, what actually is 52? As a matter of fact, the number 52 actually is the 53rd Natural. number if you take the number zero into account. So this is actually quite interesting because you see the number 53 is a prime number. You can easily check this for yourself. But on the other hand, what is also right next to the number 52? Well, that would be the number 51, I guess. If you trust the piano axioms at least. And well, 51 isn't really a prime number, so this is just 3 times 17, if I'm not mistaken. But one interesting property, if you take a look at, well, number theory, you might notice that the number 51 is actually one of infinitely many Fermat or Euler pseudo primes. So that's also a really nice property, you should look into that. So this right here is our first cookie dough being done, and now we are going to go for the next one. Right now we have only really talked about the neighbors of our number 52, but what about the number 52 itself? So it doesn't have any nice properties. So you might notice that 52 isn't exactly prime, so it's divisible by 2. What does it mean for a number to be divisible by 2? Well, it just means that we can express it, this number 52, as 2 times some natural number, A for example. This natural number in this case would be the number 26 if you do some straight through calculations. But we can actually iterate once more. The number 26, well, it's also not prime, it's also divisible by 2. Meaning we can express the number 26 as nothing but 2 times 13. And if we plug this new value into our decomposition of 52, we are actually going to get 2 squared or 2 times 2 times 13. And this right there is our unique prime number decomposition of our number 52. Meaning our number 52 consists of basically three prime factors where two of those prime factors are actually distinct, namely the number 13 and the number 2. This right here is our finished cookie dough and make sure to put this right here into the refrigerator for a few minutes until it's kind of solid, okay? Make two little balls out of it and put it into the cold place. So since I have no bloody idea what Spritztüte means in English, I'm going to refer to this thing as just chis bag or um, to say it in the words of Max Mofo, big nerd. You see, this thing just nutted. So you see, the cool thing about knowing all those prime factors is that we can actually find the number of devices of 52 pretty easily. 
by just combining all the powers of those prime numbers together. The first one would be 1 in this case. The next one would be 2, two, to the, um, two times 2 to the 0 of power. And then next we would have, well, 4, which is nothing but 2 squared. After that we would have 13. And after that we would have, well, simply 26. And the biggest of all those devices is nothing but, well, 52 in the end. I hope this does make sense, so just try it out for yourself. And if you can basically count, we are going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 devices of 52, where 5 of those are proper devices. That's what they are called. And now we could take a look at the aliquot sum of those, meaning we are just going to add all of those together. Let's just add all of those together. Come on, a lot of little pluses right here. And what would we get? So adding 6, uh, 26 to this whole thing would leave us with, well, this is 3, this is 7, this makes 20, and this just makes 46. I had to get some more dough. So our aliquot sum is nothing but 46. And if you take a closer look, 46 is indeed strictly less than our number 52. And this makes this number 52 a deficient number, meaning the aliquot sum is just less than our number itself. And we can actually calculate the degree of deficiency of the number 52 right here. With an easy formula, we are just going to take the aliquot sum plus the number itself and subtract it from two times this number. So this makes 104 minus, well, 46 plus 52 makes 98. So this means this is six. So our deficiency grade, D, or 52 is nothing but 6 in the end. Okay, so this is actually quite cool. And I want you guys to notice that this is just a big coincidence that our deficiency grade is actually the number of all the devices of 52. So this is actually quite cool. And now in the oven with this right here. So, the dough is now finally ready. I've brought the other stuff out of the oven and we can actually continue with this right here. So we are going to roll this cookie dough out and in the meanwhile I'm going to continue talking to you about number 52, I guess. Now I would like you guys to consider number 52's digit sum, meaning we are going to sum all those digits up. It has, so five and two, this makes seven, this is a prime number. And also I'm going to take a look at the alternating digit sum of this number 52. So you see the thing is, that's actually quite curious, is that something nice is going to happen. So three, which is the alternating digit sum, five minus two, so also a prime number. So already the digit sum and the alternating digit sum of 52 are both prime, so that's actually quite cool. And what is going to happen if we add those two up? Meaning seven and three is going to evaluate to 10 <laughs> in the limit when you add those up. Okay, but 10, what is this exactly? But what actually is the number 10? The number 10 is nothing but five times two if you take a look at the unique prime factorization of this. And well, five times two well, if we take the concatenation of this thing, meaning we are going to compose those two together, this is going to give you 52 once again, which is actually, actually really quite cool because this doesn't happen too often. It probably happens infinitely many times in natural numbers, but I'm not sure about this. It's quite cool. So go through this whole algorithm I told you, digit sum, alternating digit sum. If those two are prime, then add them together and see if the concatenation of the unique prime factorization of this added together thing is going to give you the number itself back once again. Um, I guess no one was sick enough to find something like this in the numbers till now, so I'm going to propose this is daddy's conjecture. <laughs> Try proving it. <laughs> Another really cool fact is that number 52 is actually the sixth bell number and there are infinitely many bell numbers of course so this just makes sense you can 
create a generating function for this. But it's actually quite cool that exactly the number 52 is one of the spell numbers. And what the spell number tells you exactly, um, I'm doing cookie, cut, cookie cutter stuff right now, is the number of partitions of a set with, well, n elements. So if you have the n spell number, then, well, you are going to have the number of partitions of this set with n elements. So in the set with six elements, you're going to have 52 partitions actually. And you see this right here is also big nut once again. <laughs> so cool. So this is my most favorite rocket cookie cutter. <laughs> Our combined number power is done right here. You see it has cooled down and now we are going to decorate this a little bit with, for example, molten chocolate, or you can take powdered sugar and mix it with water or yeah, um, lime juice, for example. And yeah, it really tastes quite good. Let's see if those cookies even taste good. They are bearable, I guess. <laughs> Like I said, I got myself some molten chocolate and I also got some big nuts and some mini, marshmall mini marshmallows, some cranberries and some white chocolate. And now we can start decorating the stuff with a bit of chocolate or something, you see? So a while back I've introduced the arithmetic derivatives. So why not take a look at this? So you see, we've already derived the unique prime factorization of number 52. So we can actually work with this already. And if I'm not mistaken, you should end up with the number 56 in the process. So it's really quite straightforward. But what happens if we differentiate this again? Well, over time you are going to end up with even bigger numbers. So this number, this number that you're going to get in the iterative process, it's going to grow bigger and bigger over time. Going to go to infinity in the limit, I guess. I don't know how to prove it, but I'm pretty certain that it goes to infinity in the limit. Meaning, well, that this is one of the scenarios when the arithmetic derivative being iterated again and again is going to tend to infinity. And this probably just has to do with the factor of two squared that we have in the beginning. Yeah. So we can't really reduce this to the number zero over time. That's really sad. I'm going to use the big nerd now. Why not take a look at the palindromic behavior of the number 52? Meaning we are going to take number 52, mirror its, its digits, going to result in 25, and then we are just going to add those numbers together. And you might notice that 25 plus 52 is nothing but, well, 77. And this is already a palindromic number, so we are done pretty quick on this one. Now I'm going to work with mini marshmallows. Maybe you guys have heard about the Collatz conjecture before. It just tells you that all the numbers are going to 1 in the end, so that's the conjecture after doing a little process. Namely, if a number is odd, then we are going to take 3 times n, where n is this odd number, plus 1, and if this very number is even, then we are going to divide this number by 2. So let's start off with number 52. Number 52 is even, and it's going to result in 26 then. 26 divided by 2 is nothing but 13. But 13 is an odd number, meaning what we have to do, we have to multiply it by 3 and add 1. This makes 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20, then this makes 10, and after that, that's 5. But 5 is odd, meaning, well, we are going to get 16 in the end. 16 divided by 2 is nothing but 8, and then we get 4, then we get 2, and then we get 1. And this should have been 11 iterations, if I'm not mistaken. And well, the Collatz conjecture is right on this number 52 right here, it goes to 1. Last but not least. I'm going to put some cranberries on those cookies right here. And I would like to bring a little happy end to this video right here because you know Flamble Maths is known for its for his positive messages at the end of every video. <laughs> so what exactly is a happy number? Well, it's just like with the Collatz conjecture, either this number in this process is going to tend to 1, or it's going to loop endlessly, or it's going to grow infinitely large. If our number goes 
to one. It's a happy number. If it doesn't, then it's an unhappy number. A really, really sad number. This is so sad. Can we hit one like? One like is the goal today. If we hit actually four likes, then we can get Pyrostat out of prison. Pray for Pyrostat. So you can trust me on that. I'm going to do the first iteration. What actually is the process? We are going to take digits of number 52, five and two. We are going to square them. And then we are going to add those squares together. So this makes 25 plus four is nothing but 29. Doing this process again is going to give us, well, 85, if I'm not mistaken, 81 plus four. And you can continue this process and you are going to get to the number 25 eventually, which is going to be the same as the number 52 in the process. So this thing right here is symmetric with the happy numbers. And you see it's going to loop in circles all the time. And this is not good, meaning our number 52 is an unhappy number. That's not a really positive message. That's quite a sad message. This is so sad. And after this awesome adventure about number 52, we've actually finished some cookies. The other cookies are on my balcony because it's really nice and cold there and they can cool down pretty fast. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this little baking math video, then please like, subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to see more of this, just tell me to do so. This was just a quick little project today. I didn't invest as much time as I did on my first baking math video, but it's just for the advent calendar. It's supposed to be just a short video in a normal case. Well, I guess um, I'm wishing you guys uh, a nice day and I'm going to see you in tomorrow's special with a lot of cool guests. See ya. Los. Brum. Bin ich auch verschneit? Ja. Bin ich verschneit? Ich bin halt verschneit. Oh, ihr. Ugh. Pfui Teufel. <lacht>